Happy fucking Halloween, cool dudes and cool dudes with dicks. My name's Davy Chappie, and if you've recently talked to me in my Discord server, link below, you'd know that I've been saying that I wanted to end October off with the Underdark Guide, tying the edginess off in a nice blood-soaked bow. Subsequently, if you've read the video title, then you'd also know that I am a fucking liar. Because today, we're gonna be doing the most requested video since the Warlock, Matt Mercer's ultimate edgy boy, the Blood Hunter. Now, if you know me, then you know that I'm not a super big fan of homebrew in general, but I thought I'd see what all the hubbub was about, so I allowed one of my Patreon players to run a Blood Hunter in one of my weekly Curse of Strahd games, just to see if I could wean myself out of the hatred of homebrew. And after playing with it for a couple of sessions, I've decided that it is good enough to talk about. So buckle your knife trousers into your darkness bicycles, cause it's time to get bloody. As always, keep in mind that most of this is just my opinion, and I'll especially preface this by saying that my experience with the Blood Hunter is pretty limited, so if my observations make your blood start to boil, feel free to leave a comment down below. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So, the Blood Hunter is what happens when famous people decide to make a super pandering, edgy homebrew class that tries its hardest to convince you that its room is not filled with posters of Black Veil Brides and the Black Parade and Black Steel the Black Hog. It's this connection with the dark and moody that gives you advantage on survival and intelligence checks related to Fey, Fiends, and Undead, as well as later adding insight and intimidation to that list. On the battlefield, you act as an angsty fighter, enhancing your normal abilities with the Blood Hunter's signature ability, Crimson Rite which lets you cut yourself as a bonus action to magically deal additional anemia damage with your attacks at the cost of reducing your maximum HP by an amount equal to your character level for the duration of the ability. You choose the type of damage from a list at first level, then gain more types as you gain levels, first from Fire, Cold, Lightning, and Acid, and then to Thunder, Psychic, and Necrotic. You can also use the right a second time to imbue a second weapon if you happen to be holding one, at the cost of losing maximum HP again. Like a monk's martial arts, the damage die starts at 1d4 and goes up as you gain levels, although I do think that it's silly that until the damage dice go up every four levels, the cost of your Crimson Rite will still go up as you level up to no benefit of your own, which thematically could be taken as you losing control of your own dark power, which just means that there are secret, hidden layers to the edginess that nobody even considered. I also personally think that dual-wielding Crimson Rites is the best way to get enough bang for your buck, because the cost is relatively tame considering the amount of damage you'll be pulling off when you whip out your twin sickle cell combo. Anyway, moving on to the other main abilities, Blood Hunters get your basic martial fighting styles to choose from, an extra attack, a sort of evil sense used by studying an object for 10 minutes, hasten movement that increases your speed by 10 and gives enemies disadvantage on attack rolls against you, immunity to fear and advantage on charms, the ability to spend hit dice in order to re-roll a death save, and at level 20, you get to completely ignore the max HP cost from your Crimson Rite. In addition to all of that quality of life insurance, you also get, at level 6, the most unreasonably edgy ability in the entire class, the Blood Maledict, which lets you choose two blood curses with additional blood curses is coming at 10th 14th, and 18th level that you can activate twice per day, with an additional activation at 11th and 17th level. These blood curses do a multitude of things, from the blood curse of the marked, that doubles crimson right damage to a target, to the blood curse of the fallen puppet, which lets a fallen creature make an additional attack, to the blood curse of mutual suffering, which deals half damage back onto whoever you target when that target hurts you. You can also amplify these powers by sacrificing your hit die to enhance their attributes, and blood curses inherently will not work on creatures that don't have any blood to curse. Honestly, I don't even know what to say anymore about the edge core. Part of me feels like it's my duty to not let someone get away with naming their ability Blood Curse of Mutual Suffering. But part of me realizes that, at this point, the class speaks for itself, and it speaks it like a 13-year-old angry at their mom. But hey, maybe it's not angry at its mom, maybe it's angry at its dad, or life, or posers. And for each flavor of edge that you could want, this class is an archetype that'll fit you. Blood Hunter archetypes are called Orders, named as such due to representing the society of hunters that specialize in these profane fields of expertise. Hey, there's a word they haven't used yet. Profane. I'll give them two minutes. To start with, we've got the Order of the Ghost Slayers, whose hatred of a Swedish dark metal band fuels them to seek out and destroy the undead wherever they find them. Ghost Slayers add radiant damage equal to their wisdom mod to their Crimson Rite. They can use their blood curses even on the bloodless. They get an extra attack for a limited time that heals them when they kill an enemy. They can see in darkness along with invisible creatures, and when they get dropped, their spirit gets back up and keeps fighting. That bonus damage for a limited time is really mean, and if you're looking for a subclass that'll make an unstoppable fighting machine, this is the one for you. Next, we have the 
order of the profane god damn it soul which takes the blood hunter and asks what if i merge this class with the edgiest official class to make the ultimate edgy franken class and so the profane soul bone the warlock to create a match made in hell as it sounds when you pick the subclass you gain access to the warlock spell list as well as the same cast at highest level style of spell casting and to remind you that you're still a blood hunter your weapon becomes your spell casting focus after that you can attack after casting a cantrip you can imbue your weapon with a spell to essentially make that spell a melee or ranged attack you gain resistance to whatever you have is your crimson right damage type or types if you have multiple active you can cast a spell as a reaction when someone misses you with an attack and finally if you kill a monster with a challenge rating of 15 or more you regain a spell slot i'm beginning to see a pattern of extreme damage output coming from the blood hunter class as a whole and the profane soul definitely panders to people who really want to turn their chocolate cake into dark chocolate cake next we have the order of the lichen which is full of a bunch of absolute nutcases that intentionally infect themselves with lycanthropy just to gain superpowers and actually freak out and get shamed by the order if some good Samaritan comes along and cures them of their lycanthropy. Meaning you should totally go out of your way to do this every chance you get. To start with, you gain a hybrid form that gives you a bunch of benefits like claws, increased strength, and tougher skin, but also detriments like a vulnerability to silver and a bloodlust that causes you to make wisdom saves if you get hit, or else turn on the closest creature to you to om nom nom. After that, you become faster, you jump higher, and your attacks become magical. You can transform faster and for longer, along with regeneration and better unarmed combat, you eventually get better at controlling your form along with the pack hunter feature, and finally, you can shift more often and howl at the moon to scare people. Honestly, this is an archetype that I would be hesitant to allow in my games just because of the fact that you can mechanically be forced to attack your own party, and that is enough to ruin the entire game's fun if it happens at an inopportune moment. And it shouldn't be everyone's responsibility to make sure that the one player isn't able to completely dick over their team. And finally, we have the Order of the Mutant, which is the Blood Hunter sect that took the original Hunter's Bane potion and thought, you know what? I want even more of that! And so, they set out to create even more potions to enhance their power even further. The whole gimmick with this subclass revolves around mutagen formulas, which grant a Blood Hunter an additional power every time you drink one, but each mutagen contains a side effect that hinders the Blood Hunter as much as it helps. For instance, you can get a flying speed, but you would get disadvantage on strength and dex saves. You can increase your dexterity at the expense of wisdom, or you could get resistance to piercing, but then vulnerable ability to slash. There are more, but you get the picture. In addition to the mutagens, mutants gain the power to craft multiple mutagens per short rest, they can ignore the side effect of a mutagen for a minute, they become immune to poisons, and they can eventually choose one mutagen and gain both the benefits and side effects of that mutagen forever. Out of all the archetypes of the Blood Hunter, I really like this subclass, and I think that the amount of variety given allows players to enjoy playing the mad scientist that they've always wanted to, edges and all. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment if you did, subscribe if you want to be a cool dude, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can slowly make my entire life revolve around D&D. Also, if you wanted to stay up to date on all of your Davy news, I keep a link to my social media in the description below. I hope you all liked Edgetober, but yeah, Davy out.